Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. Before we begin, just a reminder, if you're into Pokemon, we've got a new channel dedicated to the Pokemon trading card game Pocket app, which just released. It's a ton of fun. It's me and some of the other people you'd recognize if you're familiar with the Ekpire. I'll link to that down below. But on today's video, we'll continue looking at some of your hashtag ask Ek questions. And the first one is timely. It's from Philly Sky Guy who said, did you see the unused posters for the Rise of Skywalker, which were just released? There's one that shows everyone affiliated with the First Order, but at the bottom is a Star Destroyer not seen in the movie at all. I feel like I've seen it before and it looks like fan art. They go on to correctly point out that a lot of the promotional work for The Rise of Skywalker was a little below quality, and I actually agree. I'll probably talk about that in a different video, though. And yeah, I did see this art. I'm not sure where it comes from. I saw it on Reddit. I believe it was originally sourced from a Twitter post. I'm not going to say for sure that it's official art, but I do believe it was simply because there's lots of new poses here. I think this would be a bit too complicated for someone to throw together. I'm going to send these images to Mara, my editor, so she can scroll through them. I actually really like them, and I especially like this multicolored one here. It's just, it's kind of unique for Star Wars. The shot of Kylo with his helmet also goes pretty hard. Say what you will about the Star Wars sequels, and I've got my complaints. Adam Driver, excellent actor, excellent choice for the role of Ben Solo. I just wish we could maybe have some more of him in the future, but that seems unlikely. All right, so the specific image the question is referring to, however, is this one right here. We can see Kylo Ren, Hux, Pride, First Order Stormtroopers, the Knights of Ren, and then at the very bottom, a Star Destroyer. And the poster is correct that Despite what the artist probably intended, no, this is not a Zeiston class Star Destroyer like the kind the Final Order uses in the film, nor is this a First Order Star Destroyer. What this is, is an Allegiance class Star Destroyer. Specifically, this is a model by Fractal Sponge, who I've talked about on the channel a bunch of times. He was very kindly, gave me permission to use his ship renders for my videos. And he's also done official work with Star Wars in the past. So the Allegiance was designed based off a ship we see in Dark Empire. So his model is sort of bringing that to life in higher quality and some new details. I believe that it's this specific version, this specific shot of the Allegiance right here. I haven't done all the FBI testing yet. Either way, it's very clearly Fractal Sponge's Allegiance, and there are a few things which make this obvious. For me, the large reactor dome at the bottom of the ship, dead giveaway, as are the ball turrets, which are very common in Fractal Sponge's design. You can see it running up sort of the middle of the ship's superstructure, as well as placed along the side trench. And certainly, it's not the only time Fractal Sponge's work has made its way into Star Wars promotional material. In fact, I alluded to this earlier, but the Allegiance is actually a canonical design within Star Wars Legends. It was included along with several of Fractal Sponge's designs in the Essential Guide to Warfare, although it's my understanding that the only thing Star Wars actually had the rights to use were those specific renders he provided, not the individual ships. That being said, the Rise of Skywalker's marketing material was pretty iffy with Star Destroyers often. The Zeistin is based on the Imperial One class Star Destroyer with obviously a larger size and the super laser, but oftentimes the official artwork will mistakenly use an Imperial 2, which I guess you wouldn't notice unless you're a ship nerd like me, but once you do know how to spot the difference, you start seeing the mistakes everywhere. I've talked about Fractal Sponge's work being stolen in the past. Maybe I'll do another video recapping that if you guys are interested, but if you search my channel, you should be able to find some good resources. Now, the reason why this could be different is we don't know the intended use of these posters, nor do we know what stage of development they were from. If you look at real Star Wars concept art, i.e. images meant to flesh out what the movie will look like, often you'll see placeholder Star Destroyers. Looking at The Force Awakens, for example, you'll see instead of a First Order Star Destroyer, the Imperial 2 just sitting there, and that's simply because they don't have the ship design finalized, and Fractal Sponge's models are so high quality that you will start to see them everywhere. Just a good way to get an overall idea of the scene without having to have all details finalized. So it's possible that that's what was going on with this poster here. The Allegiance Heavy Star Destroyer was sitting in because the First Order Star Destroyer 
wasn't finalized or they didn't know whether they wanted that ship or the classic Resurgent. It's possible, however, given the presence of the new Final Order TIE Fighters, I don't know. It's a weird poster overall, though, like... Kylo Ren's shuttle isn't really in the movie very much. I see it listed on Wikipedia, but I can't remember a scene where he actually takes it. So it's very possible that this was simply made without full knowledge of what the movie was going to look like, obviously before the artist had seen the movie. So yeah, bit of a weird one, but that's not the ship in The Rise of Skywalker. That's the Allegiance class Star Destroyer, which I've covered, by the way, many times on the channel. Very cool design. Fractal imagines it as an even larger Star Destroyer. He calls it a heavy Star Destroyer, actually. It's over half a kilometer longer, it's obviously much beefier, it removes most of the ISD's fighter carrying and instead is just an all-out brawler. Pretty cool battleship design. All right, another question, this one comes from Sojdak, who says, why did Imperial Star Destroyers have most guns on the upper shell? Isn't not using the dorsal shell a waste? And yes, but there's some caveats there. For one, we talked about this earlier, Star Wars is meant to mimic real world naval battles. So it's a lot cooler if Star Destroyers look more like modern battleships, which is why they have the big conning towers, why they have the big battleship style guns on their surface. But aside from that, it's also clear that the big guns we see on the Imperial Star Destroyer are just some of the ship's weapons. When you actually watch Star Wars, this becomes very clear. And I don't mean that as an insult, but funny enough, at least according to my memory, the only time we see the big guns close up in action is in Rogue One, where we get the close up shot of the Star Destroyer, and you can see it's an ISD 1, the double turbo laser cannons firing with the shots coming out of each turret, and it's a really cool scene. Often, however, the shots kind of just emanate from the ship's body, and when you watch either the Battle of Endor or the Battle of Coruscant in Revenge of the Sith, a lot of the blasters actually come from the trench, which runs around the ship. There's that shot, for example, of the Executor broadsiding the Nebulon B, and you see shots coming from that area. And there are really several explanations for this. For one, the guns are much smaller than the big turbo lasers on the ship's surface. Those would be like the heavy guns. There are other turbo lasers spread across the ship, and if you look at the specifications of, say, an Imperial Star Destroyer, that actually follows. Some of the guns would have also been within the ship shooting out. We see See that to a degree during the Death Star Trench run. We get a good look at that in episode three with the big guns of the Venator. And you know, even in the opening scene of A New Hope, we see a Star Destroyer fire its dorsal cannons. They're not quite as distinct as the big guns on the ISD. Growing up, I always thought there looked to be a pair on either side of the hangar opening and, and maybe several others sort of just emanating from what could be details, what could just be random placements on the Star Destroyer. So yeah, the big guns are on the top. And to be fair, you can tilt the Star Destroyer in various ways. You can hit targets below your plane if you so choose just got to move around a bit and that's an out of universe aesthetic choice but there are other guns you just can't see them but that's my video for today if you've got a question you'd like to see me answer let me know down below until next time be safe have a good one and may the force be with you